in general, it means that people have equitable access and opportunity to be included and that um, they're not excluded because of some natural attribute that they have, be it sexual orientation or race or religion or anything like that. So it's really about access and that they have opportunities that are equal to others. The diversity part, I guess I could say is that we're looking for a broad range of participation in different ways. I think unfortunately where we are right now with diversity is we're looking at the optics of what diversity looks like, which is potentially what we need to be doing at this stage of where we are and trying to diversify ourselves. Eventually, I hope we get to the place where we can think about diversity as being different orientations, different ways of thinking, and not only physical appearance. So one of the main aspects of our publication is that we use a participatory action research approach. And what's very important to us is having the voices of our partners on the ground included very much in what we do. So we had a very intentional conscious effort that all of our chapters, I think all of our chapters were very integrated and co-authored with the people we've been working with. And also that a lot of the people we work with on the ground, youth leaders, grassroots activists are people who tend to not have their voice represented in majority conversations. And so they're kind of outlying outliers to these kinds of core conversations. And we thought that's not where we wanna place them. We want them to be central and integrated into the main conversations that we're having about conflict transformation, gathering data, analyzing data and interventions in their communities. And so the other thing is we learn different approaches from them. So we definitely have a way of privileging local knowledge because there are lots of different ways we can create knowledge. And we don't think that only the academy owns that knowledge creation. So we think it's really a nice combination, combination of local knowledge with the youth leaders we've worked with and academic knowledge and other forms of knowledge. So it's a way of amplifying and giving a space for the voices of those who are less heard. If I'm in the higher education industry, per se, uh, university graduate degree level, then um, it means that when I do admissions with students, I'm looking to have a diverse population of students in the classroom, meaning international, different backgrounds, different age groups, different levels of experience, different disciplines that inform the work they do. If I'm looking at faculty, then I'm trying to have a broad range of faculty who represent different kinds of experiences in the field, which is a very broad kind of field of negotiation and conflict resolution and PAR work. And that means they have uh, different types of experiences. Some can be coming from an organizational context. Some are coming from community-based organizations. Some are coming from having participated through NGOs in state level negotiations and mediations. So it just represents uh, different ways. And also then what does it mean about um, economic equity and economic access? I do work at a private university and so it is costly. So how do we create opportunities where people can be funded to have uh, an education, which then also takes us outside the academy and providing education for people without degree necessarily, or not obtaining a degree and not paying the cost, but still being able to access the knowledge and the learning. So from the academic world, it's a very conscious lens that we use in a selection of faculty and students for sure. If I'm thinking about my work as a consultant in organizations, then I'm looking at the DEIA aspects of the teams and the organizations and my Original background was also in intercultural communications. So I'm looking at how do we communicate and build relationships across difference. And a lot of DEIA work focuses on difference. So that is part of it. I just wrote a chapter, which will be published early next year about global leadership and having a meta-narrative about what leadership means. And we don't have a meta-narrative 
about what it means to be a leader, because in any organization, there's so much diversity and diversity of thinking and diversity about what do I expect from a leader? What should a leader be? Who should I be in relation to a leader? So how do people lead across difference is a big deal as well. And then in communities, it's how do people communicate and live in harmony across difference? And how do you use that difference to enrich the experience of being in the same community? You know, I'd love to get to the point in time when we don't need to focus on DEIA because it's already a natural part of the fabric of what we're doing. It's that people have equal opportunity to advance. People have access to education and progression and how we define knowledge shifts enough so that we can honor and respect different sources and forms of knowledge. Uh, until we get there, I think we have to have concerted efforts and maybe as it starts to balance itself out, then we can lessen the regulations and the constraints about pushing for a DEI agenda because DEIA will be just part of, like I said, the everyday fabric of our student population, our faculty population, and that people are learning to live with and appreciate and value the differences in their local environments, be a community or a workspace. I have not taken advantage enough of what IGI has been offering. I do know that um, we're very appreciative of IGI supporting the publication of our book. And it's very meaningful to all of the people we worked with. And there at least, there's of course my uh, co-author, Juan Lopez, but then there must be at least 10 other contributors. So we're all uh, very grateful and appreciative of what IGI has done. I think that, um, IJ has quite a nice selection of publications and I appreciate that you're doing this DEIA initiative and having a special section on your website for it. So I will be sure to uh, use social media to promote what IJ is doing, which we've done to some degree, but I will really up the effort, especially when this, this uh, interview comes out and then we see the other things that you have on your DEIA initiative. suitable for use in your course syllabus and as an integral resource for research advancements within your department, this publication should be included within your institution's library along with these related publications. Offered in print, ebook, and print plus ebook, and as a part of IJ Global's ebook collection, this publication is available through IJ Global's online bookstore as well as many other major booksellers and platforms, including EBSCOhost, Gobi, ProQuest, and Oasis. Purchase or recommend this title to your library today.